Events are transmitted to the palms of our hand 24 hours a day. Events which surprise us, occasionally even frighten us. We're going to bring you some of the most bizarre and mysterious natural phenomena on the planet. From the sea that turns to cappuccino, to the massive holes that open and swallow buildings, to an avian apocalypse on New Year's Eve. What makes that happen for them just to drop out of the sky like that? Using eyewitness accounts, news footage and experts and scientists, we are going to try and explain what on earth is going on. For our first set of weird events, we're going to be looking at stories that had people quaking in their boots. When animals die in strange ways, superstitions can run wild. And some are left fearing the end of the world is nigh. From the old wives' tales of rains of fish to the weird and spooky event in the American Deep South. But first, we're travelling to California, where on the 8th of March in 2011, the locals awoke to something quite fishy. As the sun came up over Redondo Harbour, an ominous scene was revealed. Overnight, the entire marina had become choked with death. Now, Californian authorities are carrying out a large-scale clean-up after a million dead sardines were found floating in a marina just south of Los Angeles. In some parts of King Harbour, the water was almost half a metre thick with dead fish. The carnage was incredible. Look, there was the odd survivor trying to make a bid to escape a grisly fate. But it was creepy, to say the least, and soon a worried crowd gathered to view this tragedy. Oh, it's sad. It's really sad. I can't believe how big these sardines are. Uh, it makes me wonder what's in the water. We're used to seeing fish hauled in by a trawler, but for more than a million to just die spontaneously, well, that's totally out of the ordinary. Speculation ran wild as to the cause of these alien scenes. I didn't think schools of fish could be this big. No, there was way over a million. It's pretty mind-boggling, I think. So why had so many fish swum into the harbour, and then what could have killed them? Mass gatherings of fish are not unusual. In fact, this is exactly what sardines are known for. They shoal in their millions, following colder currents rich in plankton. As the fish feast on this plentiful food, they in turn become dinner as predators flock for miles around to feast on them. Sharks cut through the shoal, which twists and turns like one giant organism. Dolphins join in herding the fish to the surface, where the sardines have nowhere to go and they're attacked from every angle. So, had the fish at Redondo been chased into the harbour by hungry predators? Or had the sardines come into the marina to shelter from a storm that had blown up over the ocean that night? Well, when they actually tested the fish, they found another, more likely culprit. The sardines' last supper had been toxic algae. Their bodies were full of a poisonous acid. Scientists believe the effects of these toxins disorientated the fish, leading them to accidentally swim into this dead end. Once there, local experts say a more obvious danger awaited them. Uh, huge numbers of fish in, here in the harbour, 
uh, and the sun goes down so there's no photosynthesis going on so there's no oxygen being created and there's just the fish consuming the oxygen so when they consume it all it's all gone and then they they basically suffocate Whatever brought them into the harbour, the nail in their coffins had been the lack of oxygen. Death by suffocation, not a pleasant way to die. And as 75 tonnes of fish started to rot, the smell wasn't very pleasant either. But their deaths weren't entirely in vain. The circle of life was completed as more than a million sardines were sent off to be used as fertiliser. Our next story involves tales that go back to ancient times. Worldwide, events have taken place that left eyewitnesses gazing skyward and asking, how? So we're off to London in search of answers to a very strange rain indeed. According to the expression, it's raining cats and dogs. But of course, that never really happens. Yet tales of animals falling from the sky is a phenomenon that spans the centuries and one particular creature is mentioned time and time again. Fish falling from the heavens like rain. Surely fiction, not fact. But Oliver Crimmen, the fish curator of the Natural History Museum, believes that these tall tales might actually have some flesh on the bones. In 1984, I was sitting at my desk in the museum. I got a call um, from somebody who said that fish had fallen from the sky in London. Now, we do get some fairly unusual calls, and I had heard of this phenomenon before, but the, the caller was doubting that they would be taken seriously at all. Mr. Rong Langdon had um, actually left the fishes lying in his garden and a reporter went and, and took some from the roof and from the yard outside his house and brought them back to the museum. But come on, could this really be true? Did these very fish really fall from the sky or is this some fanciful tale, no more than an elaborate hoax? It's not impossible that somebody scattered fish around. In this case, they didn't bother making them look very pretty and they carefully chose species which would be found nearby from the river. It all looks pretty feasible. So, the species lived in the Thames. The river is, after all, where the fish belong. But how could they find their way into the sky in order to fall from it? Well, there is one potential explanation. We don't associate fish with uh, aerial transport at all, but if we look for an, a natural phenomenon that could really account for fish landing on the ground, really the best going is a water spout. Now, a water spout is similar to something you'd find on land. Just as tornadoes can pick up trees and houses, a water spout could suck up fish. These are then carried along in the storm until it loses its energy and its aquatic load is deposited on land, like fish out of water. It all looks pretty feasible. And I think if we take the number of reports and their varying quality, then um, I, I think the phenomenon definitely occurs. So it seems that science has an explanation for these somewhat fanciful tales. That said, the theory is constantly being tested by new events. In Australia in 2010, fish fell from the sky in the middle of a dry red desert miles from any water. That must have been quite a water spout. But let's hope in this age of communication and better technology that we finally get some photographic evidence of fish raining from the sky. Then we can transform this phenomena from myth into scientific 